Welcome to the Quick Pro Camera Guide for the Sony Alpha 77 Mark II. This is a great camera that will capture amazing images as well as HD video. We hope you'll enjoy learning more about it with this guide. This guide is meant to be a study tool to be used in connection with, not a replacement of your camera's owner's manual. You can watch it entirely in one sitting or by chapter. The functions and features of the A77 Mark II that we cover are designed to give you a solid working knowledge of your camera. Our goal is to not only explain how to adjust the settings on your camera, but also help you understand when and why you would be motivated to take creative control of your camera. It's really not possible to cover every configuration on your camera, but we will provide you a very solid foundation to build your digital photography skills on. With this new information, you'll be able to improve your ability to capture great pictures in a variety of shooting settings. Let's get started. Your A77 Mark II has many sophisticated buttons and dials, and to take the best pictures with your camera, you'll want to be familiar with the functions of each of them. Let's begin with a brief overview of many of the camera's buttons and features. Many of the things we'll discuss in this chapter are discussed in greater detail later in this guide. First, there is the shutter release button and power switch. To take a picture, simply rotate the switch to the on position. Press and hold the shutter button halfway down for a moment, allow the camera to focus, and press it the rest of the way down to take the picture. This is the front control dial. In many of the camera's shooting modes, you can make adjustments to the shooting settings with this control dial. In the menu system, this dial can be used to quickly scroll through the menu items. This is the drive mode button, which provides access to the camera's drive modes. The drive modes determine how many times the shutter releases when you press the shutter button. The A77 Mark II has single shot advance, continuous high and low speed, a 10 second and 2 second self timer, 10 second self timer continuous with a 3 and 5 image option, and multiple bracketing options that are available in the camera's P, A, S and M shooting modes. In single shooting mode, one picture will be taken when you press the shutter button completely. The continuous shooting mode has both high and low speed options. When the continuous mode is selected, the camera will continuously shoot at up to 12 frames per second. The next drive mode options are the 10 second and 2 second self timer options. The self timer options are great for when you'd like to include yourself in the photo or reduce camera shake at very slow shutter speeds. The next drive mode is the 10 second self timer continuous with options for three or five images. This will take a series of three or five photos 10 seconds after the shutter button is pressed. This is the white balance button. We'll discuss white balance in greater detail later in this guide. This is the exposure compensation button. In the camera's programmed auto, aperture priority, and shutter priority modes, you can press and hold this button while rotating the front control dial to adjust the overall brightness of the image. If you place the exposure compensation cursor at the plus side of the scale, the image will be brighter. And if you place the cursor toward the minus side, the image will be darker. After you've taken the photo, you'll want to make sure to set the exposure compensation back to zero. This is the ISO button which provides fast and easy access to the camera's ISO settings. This is the display panel illumination button, which turns the display panel backlight on. This is the display panel. This panel displays many of the camera's important shooting settings. Here is the finder LCD button. By default, your camera will always be in the live view screen mode, meaning the scene will be displayed on the LCD. To switch the screen mode from the LCD to the electronic viewfinder, you can press the Finder LCD button. Also note that when these IP sensors are covered, like when the camera is brought close to the face, the view will be automatically switched from the LCD to the electronic viewfinder. Here is the accessory shoe, 
which allows you to attach flash units and other accessories to the camera. This is the microphone, which records sound during movie recording. And this is the built-in flash. The built-in flash can provide extra light in low light conditions. We'll discuss more about the built-in flash later in this guide. This is the mode dial. By rotating the mode dial, you can tell the camera what exposure settings to use. When you choose any of the modes in this section of the dial, the camera will do all the work for you. All you need to do is point and shoot. These modes include the auto, scene, sweep panorama, and continuous advance priority. This section of the mode dial has the manual modes. When you use the manual modes, you'll choose many of the camera's settings. These modes are more advanced, but with a little practice can produce amazing results. These modes include program auto, aperture priority, shutter priority, manual, and memory recall 1, 2, and 3. There's also a movie mode on the A77 Mark II's mode dial. When the camera is used in this mode, you will be able to record movies with adjusted exposure settings. On this side of the camera, there is the memory card slot cover. Your Sony A77 Mark II can use a variety of memory cards, including SD, SDHC, SDXC, Memory Stick Pro Duo, Pro HG Duo, and XCHG Duo. When you're inserting an SD memory card, you'll want to make sure that the manufacturer's logo is facing the back of the camera. For Memory Stick Pro Duo cards, the manufacturer's logo will face the front of the camera. Simply insert the card until it clicks into place and close the card slot cover. Do not force the card. If the card does not click easily into place, check to see that it's positioned correctly. Before you start taking pictures with a new memory card, it's a good idea to format it. Also keep in mind that your camera will operate faster if you periodically format your card rather than simply deleting images from it to free up space for more picture taking. Make sure that you do not format your card unless you have already copied the images that you want to save to your computer. Formatting your card will erase all the images. To format a memory card, press the menu button. Then use the multi-selector to scroll to the fifth setup menu. The first menu item is Format. Press the multi-selector to select it. The camera will prompt you with a warning. Select Enter and the memory card will be formatted. Also on this side of the camera, there is the NFC mark, which indicates the touch point for connecting the camera to an NFC-enabled smartphone. Now let's take a look at this side of the camera. First, we'll find the flash button. Pressing this button will make the flash pop up in the manual modes. The flash will pop up and fire automatically in many of the camera's automatic and scene modes. Also on this side of the camera, there are the focus mode switches on the lens and the camera body. For the camera to autofocus, you'll want to make sure that these switches are not set to the MF or manual focus positions. These are the camera's four terminal covers, which will allow you to connect the camera to other devices. Here you can connect a remote control, and this terminal will allow you to use an external microphone for movie recording. The DC in terminal will allow you to use an external power source for the camera. The HDMI terminal will allow you to connect an external monitor or HDTV. And the micro USB terminal will allow you to connect a USB compatible device. This is the lens release button. One of the biggest benefits of owning a digital SLR camera is the ability to use a variety of lenses to mount or install a lens. Make sure that the camera is switched to off. Hold the camera with one hand and the lens with the other like this. Align the lenses index with the camera's index. Then gently rotate the lens until it clicks into place. When you want to dismount a lens, press the lens release button while holding the camera with the same hand. Then with the other hand, rotate the lens until it uncouples. Take great care not to scratch the lens by allowing it to make contact with anything. When you need to clean your lens, it's a good idea to use a lens cloth. Other fabrics can dull or scratch your lens. Avoid changing lenses in windy or dusty conditions. This will help the image sensor stay clean and free of dust. 
Now let's take a look at the back of the camera. The most prominent feature is the fully articulated LCD monitor, which can tilt and swivel as well as swing up and away from the camera body. Note that this monitor can pivot, tilt, and rotate only in specific directions, and forcing the monitor in a way other than intended may cause damage. This screen serves several purposes. First, it provides you with a full-time live view of the scene. Next, it displays the images that have been taken in the playback mode. Using the camera's multi-selector, you can scroll through the images on the memory card. The LCD also provides fast and easy access to the camera's menu system and all of the shooting settings. Here, we'll find the menu button, which is used to access the camera's sophisticated menu system. Directly above the LCD is the electronic viewfinder, which also allows you to frame your images. Before you start taking pictures, you'll want to focus the electronic viewfinder. To do this, use the diopter adjustment dial located to the right of the eye cup. Rotate the dial until the automatic focus points in the viewfinder are in sharp focus. At the bottom of the viewfinder display, you can see the shutter speed, aperture, the exposure compensation, and the ISO setting. You'll also see the focus confirmation light appear when an image is in sharp focus. Over the scene, you'll see the camera's focus points. When the shutter button is pressed halfway to focus, the area where the focus points turn green will be in focus. This is the movie record button. At any time during still image shooting, you can simply press the movie record button to begin recording a movie. To end recording, simply press the button again. This button has three functions. First, it is the auto exposure lock or AEL button. You can use this button when you're taking pictures into the sun or near a window to ensure that the subject will not be too dark or too bright. Second, this button is the slow sync button. When you're using the built-in flash in certain shooting modes, pressing and holding this button will activate the flash's slow sync mode. To use the slow sync button, make sure that the flash is popped up and that the mode dial is not set to S or M then press and hold the slow sync button. You'll see a small star icon appear at the bottom right corner of the LCD. Then simply take the picture. The slow sync flash mode will allow both the subject and the background to be properly exposed. This is especially useful when taking portraits outdoors at night and you'd like the background to be properly exposed as well as the subject. Finally, this button serves as the Image Index Zoom Out button in the playback mode. This button has two purposes. First, it is the Autofocus Manual Focus button. Pressing and holding this button will allow you to temporarily switch to manual focus without using the focus switches on the lens or camera body. Second, this button is the Enlarge button in playback. This is the rear control dial. In many of the camera's shooting modes, you can make adjustments to shooting settings with this control dial. In the menu system, this dial can be used to quickly scroll through the various menus. This is the multi-selector, which is used to navigate to all of the different settings and options on the LCD. This is the display button. Each time this button is pressed, a different set of information will appear. This button can be used when you're taking pictures and when you're in playback mode. This is the function button. When this button is pressed in any of the shooting modes, quick access is given to many important shooting settings and functions. Let's take a look at the information and settings that can be accessed via the function button. Note that the options will vary depending on the shooting mode that is selected, and we'll be showing the options that are available in the program auto mode. Many of these settings will be discussed in more detail later in this guide. To enter the recording information screen, simply press the function button. The first setting is drive mode. To change this setting, you can simply rotate the front control dial. To see all of the options for a setting, press the multi-selector. You can use the multi-selector to navigate through the options. Press the multi-selector to select an option. To re-enter the function settings, we'll press the function button again. Next, we'll find options for flash mode, flash compensation, focus area, exposure compensation, ISO, metering mode, white balance, 
DRO Auto HDR, Creative Style, Picture Effect, and when in movie mode, options for shooting mode. This is the Smart Teleconverter Focus Magnifier button. Pressing this button will allow you to digitally zoom in without the use of the zoom ring on the lens. Pressing this button once will zoom the image 1.4 times, and pressing it again will zoom the image two times. This is the playback button, which allows you to view the images and movies that have been recorded on the camera's memory card. This button also has two functions. In the shooting modes, it serves as the camera's custom button, which can be assigned to one of many functions. To assign a function to the custom button, Enter the camera's menu system and scroll to the sixth custom settings menu and choose custom key settings. Here you can scroll through the list of options and select the function that you'd like. In playback mode, this button serves as the delete button. Your Sony a77 Mark II can record image files in two different file types, RAW and JPEG. Both file types have benefits and drawbacks to consider. Let's talk a little about these two image file types. There are several important things to know about RAW files. First, they are not actually image files. They are actually the raw data saved to the memory card directly from the image sensor. Next, RAW files are uncompressed, meaning that the file sizes are considerably larger than those of compressed files. RAW files have a much broader range of tones. Shadow and highlight areas have more detail than JPEG files. Also, you can make extensive edits to a RAW file without losing data or image quality. And finally, RAW files appear flatter with less color and contrast and must be processed on the computer before they're printed. JPEG files, however, are very different from RAW files. JPEG files are a standard image file format that can be read by any image software. They are compressed, which means that not all of the image data is actually saved. Because they're compressed, JPEGs are much smaller in file size. JPEGs have a more narrow range of shadows and highlights and will lose some image data each time they're edited. Finally, JPEG files are processed by your camera and are able to be printed directly from the memory card. Because JPEG images require less time when editing on the computer, I use a high quality JPEG setting for everyday picture taking and snapshots. If I know ahead of time that I'm going to be extensively editing my images, I will choose the RAW plus JPEG format. Let's take a look now at how to choose the image size and quality settings on the A77 Mark II. First, we'll press the Menu button and make sure that we're in the camera's Settings menu, indicated by a camera icon with the number 1 highlighted. The top option, Image Size, is where you can choose the number of megapixels you'd like the camera to use when recording images. The first option, Large, will use all 24 megapixels. The second option, Medium, we use 12 megapixels, and the last option, small, will record the images using 6 megapixels. Unless I know that I will only be using the images for email or posting online, I like to keep the camera set to the large 24 megapixel setting. Let's also take a look at the image quality options. There are five different options. First, there is RAW. With this setting, the camera will record one RAW file. The next option, RAW and JPEG, will record a raw image file in addition to a JPEG file. There are also three JPEG options, extra fine, fine, and standard. The difference between the JPEG options is the level of compression. The extra fine option will have the least amount of compression and produce a higher quality image. The standard option will have more compression, slightly lower quality, and smaller file sizes. Your camera features a variety of shooting modes, ranging from fully automatic to completely manual. This gives you a lot of flexibility and creative control over your photos. 
You can adjust the exposure, shutter speed, and depth of field settings on your camera to help you capture the pictures you want. As you become more familiar with these concepts and principles, you'll improve your ability to capture the best pictures possible. Let's discuss the camera's automatic, scene, sweep panorama, and continuous advanced priority modes now. With each of these modes, the camera will adjust all of the settings for you. All you have to do is point and shoot. First, there is auto. In auto mode, the camera will make adjustments for the brightness and color of the photo automatically. In this mode, the camera will quickly assess a scene and then switch to an appropriate scene mode to take the picture. Now let's discuss the camera scene modes. To access these modes, rotate the mode dial to the scene mode setting. To select a scene mode, rotate the front control dial. There is a scene mode available for almost any shooting scenario, including portrait, sports action, macro, landscape, sunset, night scene, handheld twilight, and night portrait. When you recognize one of these environments, simply choose from the scene selection menu and the camera will optimize the necessary settings. Let's talk a little about each of these modes. First, there is the portrait mode. This will help you emphasize the subject by blurring the background. It also reproduces soft skin tones. Make sure you focus on the subject's eyes for the best results. Next is the sports action mode. This shoots fast motion at higher shutter speeds. If you hold down the shutter button, the camera will continue to take pictures one after the other until you release the button. This mode works best with well-lit scenes as insufficient light will not allow high shutter speeds. The next mode is the macro mode. This is a great mode for close-ups of small subjects that are physically close to the lens. Use this to capture subjects such as flowers and food in clear, sharp focus. When shooting at distances of less than 9 inches, using a macro lens may be necessary. The landscape mode captures the entire range of scenery in sharp focus with vivid color. Shooting with your lens set to wide angle will increase the sense of vastness of the scenery. You'll also want to make sure that you keep the camera level when you're shooting landscape images. The sunset mode allows you to vividly and dramatically capture the warm colors of dusk and dawn. This mode is also great for capturing silhouettes. Shutter speeds may be slow in this mode, so you might consider using a tripod. The night scene mode is great for capturing nighttime scenes without losing the dark atmosphere. In this mode, the shutter speed may be slow, and the use of a tripod will help to avoid blur due to camera shake. You'll also want to make sure that the camera is level when you're photographing landscapes or similar scenes. The next mode is the handheld twilight mode. With this mode, you can take pictures at night without using a tripod and still get impressive results. Use this mode for stationary subjects or scenes. The handheld twilight mode takes a burst of shots and then combines the shots to create one image with reduced blur, camera shake, and noise. Keep the camera as still as possible during the continuous shooting. Please note that after the shots are taken, there will be a delay while the camera processes and combines the images. The last scene mode, Night Portrait, is great for capturing images of people in nighttime scenes. In this mode, the flash will fire to expose the subject, and the shutter will remain open for a longer period of time to properly expose the background. Now that we've talked about the camera's scene modes, let's discuss how to use the sweep panorama shooting modes. First, rotate the mode dial to the sweep panorama icon. Now, the camera will prompt you to take the shot. Hold the camera steady, press the shutter button halfway down to set focus and exposure. Then, press the shutter the rest of the way down as you slowly move the camera in the direction of the arrow. As you're moving the camera, you will hear it take multiple shots at very high speed. In this mode, it's important to make sure that you follow the direction of the arrow and move the camera at a smooth, consistent speed. Otherwise, the camera will not be able to shoot the panorama and will prompt you with an error message. The camera will seamlessly stitch all of the images together to create a single panoramic image. Note that it will take the camera a few moments to process the image. 
There are a few more things that we should discuss about the sweep panorama mode. The panorama image size and panorama direction. To make adjustments to these settings, make sure that the mode dial is set to the sweep panorama mode, and then press the menu button. Here, make sure that you're on the first camera settings menu. Use the multi-selector to navigate to the panorama size option. You can select standard or wide. The next menu item is the panorama direction. This is the setting that controls the direction of the arrow when shooting a panorama. You can choose from right, up, left, or down. Now let's take a minute to talk about the A77 Mark II's Continuous Advanced Priority Mode. With this mode, you'll have the ability to capture very fast-moving subjects with amazingly crisp focus. The Continuous Advanced Priority Mode can capture images at up to 12 frames per second. To operate the camera in this mode, rotate the mode dial to the Continuous Advanced Priority icon. Now, all you need to do is press the shutter button halfway down to focus and the rest of the way down to take the picture. The camera will continue to take pictures as long as the shutter button is held down. To make sure that the focus will be adjusted during shooting, you'll want to make sure that the focus mode is set to continuous. To do this, simply rotate the focus mode dial to C. One of the most important concepts in photography is exposure, or the amount of light that falls on the camera's image sensor. A properly exposed photo will have good detail in the shadow and highlight areas. Photos that are too bright are overexposed, and photos that are too dark are underexposed. There are three ways that your A77 Mark II measures light. These are the camera's metering modes. Note that the metering modes are available only in certain shooting modes. To access the camera's metering modes, make sure that the mode dial is set to PASM, Continuous Advanced, or Sweep Panorama. Note that you can also set the metering modes in the camera's movie mode. Now, we'll simply press the function button and use the multi-selector to navigate to the metering mode option. The first metering mode is called multi-segment metering. This is an all-around metering mode suited for portraits and even backlit subjects. The camera sets the exposure automatically to suit the scene. This is a good mode to use for many situations, but sometimes when the scene is very bright or very dark, you'll want to use a different metering mode. The center weighted metering mode is weighted at the center and then averaged for the entire scene. The last mode is spot metering. This mode is effective when the background is much brighter than the subject due to backlighting. Spot metering covers only the area in the spot metering circle at the center of the frame. Now that you know a little about how your camera sees and measures light to create properly exposed photos, let's talk a little about the shooting modes on the A77 Mark II. Your camera features a variety of shooting modes ranging from fully automatic to completely manual. This gives you a lot of flexibility and creative control over your photos. You can adjust the exposure, shutter speed, and depth of field settings on your camera to help you capture the pictures you want. As you become more familiar with these concepts and principles, you'll improve your ability to capture the best pictures possible. We've already talked about the camera's basic shooting modes. Let's discuss the more advanced shooting modes. Note that we'll learn about these modes, but we won't spend very much time discussing basic photography concepts. If you'd like to learn more about how to use the camera's advanced modes to take amazing photos, you may benefit from QuickPro's Fundamentals series which covers important elements of photography, including exposure, basic lighting, and composition. These modes allow you to take the most creative control over the camera's settings, like aperture, shutter speed, ISO, white balance, flash, as well as a variety of other settings. The first mode we'll discuss is called Program Auto, and is represented with a P on the mode dial. In this mode, the camera automatically adjusts shutter speed and aperture for optimal exposure. This may seem similar to the auto modes, but with the program auto mode, you have control over the camera's exposure compensation, focus mode, drive mode, and built-in flash settings. To operate in this mode, rotate the mode dial to P. 
You can monitor exposure settings like the aperture and shutter speed on the bottom of the LCD, on the display panel, or in the viewfinder. Taking a picture in this mode is easy. Simply hold the shutter button halfway down to focus, then press the shutter button all the way to take the picture. You may find that the image is too bright or too dark for your liking. To adjust the exposure compensation, press and hold the exposure compensation button while rotating one of the control dials. Values with a minus sign will make the image darker, and values with a plus sign will make the image brighter. The next setting on the mode dial is the A or Aperture Priority Mode. The Aperture Priority Mode is useful for times when you want to control the depth of field in an image. Depth of field is the term used to describe the distance between the nearest and farthest objects in a scene that appear acceptably sharp in an image. When only a small area or subject in an image is in focus, it's said to have a shallow depth of field. This effect is achieved by using a smaller f-stop number. When everything in both the foreground and background is in focus, an image is said to have a long depth of field. For a long depth of field, choose a large f-stop number. When you're shooting in aperture priority mode, you'll set the aperture and the camera will automatically select the correct shutter speed for proper exposure. To use this mode, set the mode dial to A and rotate one of the control dials to select an aperture value as you watch the display on the LCD, on the display panel, or in the viewfinder. Once you have made your selection, press the shutter button halfway down to focus and the rest of the way to take the picture. The next setting on the mode dial is the S or shutter priority mode. The shutter priority mode is useful for times when you want to control motion in a scene, whether it's freezing action or blurring a moving subject. In this mode, you'll set the shutter speed and the camera will automatically select an appropriate aperture value for proper exposure. To use the camera in shutter priority mode, set the mode dial to S and rotate one of the control dials to set the shutter speed. The Sony A77 Mark II has shutter speeds that range from very slow, 30 full seconds, to very fast, 1 8,000th of a second. You can view the shutter speed and aperture values on the LCD or viewfinder. The next advanced shooting mode is the manual or M mode. This mode gives you complete control of the camera. In manual mode, you will set both the shutter speed and aperture to create the exposure. To operate the camera in manual mode, rotate the mode dial to M. To set the shutter speed, rotate the rear control dial. To set the aperture, rotate the front control dial. As you're making adjustments to the aperture and shutter speed, watch the small MM icon on the LCD. The number to the left of the icon indicates how close your settings are to proper exposure. Proper exposure is indicated by a plus minus zero value. You can choose just the right aperture and shutter speed combination for your scene, whether you want to freeze action or create a very shallow depth of field. Make the necessary adjustments to the aperture and shutter speed so that the exposure level indicator is near zero. Then press the shutter button halfway down to focus and the rest of the way down to take the picture. The Sony A77 Mark II has a unique memory recall mode where you can register three combinations of your most frequently used settings to the memory. Then you can quickly recall the settings with the memory recall mode on the mode dial. Let's take a look at how to register settings for the memory recall mode now. First, you'll need to make adjustments to all of the camera settings that you'd like to register. Set the shooting mode. We'll choose aperture priority, but other shooting modes can be registered as well. Now you can make adjustments to the aperture, ISO, white balance, and any other settings you'd like the camera to recall. After you've made all the desired adjustments, you're ready to register them to the camera's memory. To do this, press the menu button and navigate to the ninth camera settings menu. Here, scroll to the memory setting and select it. You can choose to have your settings registered to bank one, two, or three. Simply press the multi-selector to choose the option you'd like. Now, when you rotate the mode dial to the one, two, or three position, the respective settings will be automatically selected. 
In addition to aperture and shutter speed, the camera's ISO setting will have a significant impact on whether your images will be properly exposed. The ISO setting affects the image sensor's sensitivity to light. The higher the number, the less light that is required to properly expose the image sensor. You can either have the camera automatically choose the sensitivity, or you can set it manually. Here's how to set the ISO on the A77 Mark II. Press the ISO button to bring up the ISO speed options on the camera's LCD monitor. Use the multi-selector or control dial to select the ISO setting you'd like. In the standard ISO settings options, you can choose from ISOs ranging from 50 to 25,600. It's a good idea to set the ISO speed to suit the ambient light setting that you're shooting in. When you increase the ISO speed, a higher number for low light, a faster shutter speed can be used to avoid blurry images. Keep in mind that a higher ISO setting may introduce noise or grain into your images. An ISO setting that is too high for the shooting conditions will make the image lose quality and you might start to see particles in your picture. Experiment with ISO settings to become more familiar with their range and control. Here's a guide that will help you have a basic idea of what ISO settings to use in various situations. When you're outdoors in full sun, use ISO 100 to 200. In the shade on an overcast day or indoors with lots of window light, use ISO 400. ISOs 800 and higher should be used indoors for action shots or in other low light conditions. To help keep digital noise to a minimum, the Sony A77 Mark II has an impressive multi-frame noise reduction ISO option. To choose the ISO setting within multi-frame noise reduction, press the ISO button to view the ISO options. Scroll to the multi-frame noise reduction option and press the multi-selector to the right to make adjustments. Here you can scroll up or down to select the desired ISO setting. Then press the multi-selector to the right to select the NR effect settings. This setting will determine the level of noise reduction effect. You can choose from standard or high. When this option is used, the camera will take several shots at very high speed and combine them for a final image with significantly reduced noise. Now that we've discussed shooting modes and ISO settings, Let's take a minute to talk about the A77 Mark II's drive modes. The drive modes determine when and how many times the shutter releases when the shutter button is pressed. To access the drive modes, press the drive mode button. You can use the multi-selector or the front control dial to select the drive mode you'd like. The first drive mode is single shooting. In this mode, the camera will take one picture each time the shutter button is pressed completely. The next drive mode is continuous shooting. When the camera is set to use this drive mode, the camera will continuously take pictures when the shutter button is held down. Use the multi-selector or rear control dial to select high or low speed continuous. The next drive mode is self-timer. The self-timer has options for 10 and 2 seconds. Use the multi-selector or rear control dial to choose between 10 and 2 seconds. When this drive mode is selected, the camera will take the picture either 10 seconds or 2 seconds after the shutter button is pressed completely. The next drive mode is continuous self-timer. With this drive mode, the camera will take the specified number of shots 10 seconds after the shutter button is pressed completely. Use the multi-selector or rear control dial to select either 3 or 5 shots. The next 4 drive modes are the camera's bracketing modes. Using these modes, you can take continuous bracketed images, single shot bracketed images, white balance bracketed images, and DRO bracketed images. Let's take a few moments to learn more about the options that are displayed on the camera's LCD monitor. Note that these settings may vary depending on the shooting mode that you have selected. Additional displays can be enabled or disabled in the menu system. On the default display screen, several important shooting settings are displayed. 
First, on the bottom of the screen, the shutter speed and aperture are displayed. Next, there is the exposure value scale and the ISO setting. At the top left corner of the screen, the shooting mode will be displayed. Next, you'll see the memory card indicator with the number of shots remaining. Next, there is the image aspect ratio, image size, image quality, movie size, and movie quality. Next, there is the NFC icon followed by the battery remaining and percentage indicators. To view the No Display Info screen, simply press the Display button. This will hide most of the display info. Pressing the Display button again will bring up a live histogram of the scene. The histogram can help you determine proper exposure. Generally speaking, if the histogram is shifted too far to the left, you'll have an image that is underexposed. If it's shifted too far to the right, your image will be overexposed. A properly exposed image should have the data distributed in the center or throughout the entire range of the histogram. Pressing the display button again will activate the four viewfinder display. Here, you'll see the memory card indicator with the number of shots remaining, image aspect ratio, image size, image quality, movie size and movie quality, and the NFC icon. This is the steady shot camera shake indicator. Below that, you'll see the shooting mode, shutter speed, aperture, and the exposure scale or exposure compensation scale depending on the shooting mode. This is the camera's digital level which will let you know if the camera is level both vertically and horizontally. Here is the ISO setting, a live view histogram, and the battery remaining indicator. On the right side of the screen, you'll see the drive mode, flash mode, autofocus mode, autofocus area, smile face detection, peaking level, zebra stripes, metering mode, white balance settings, DRO auto HDR settings, creative styles, picture effects, aspect ratio, and image quality. To access and make adjustments to any of the settings on the right side of the screen, press the function button, use the multi-selector to choose the setting you'd like to make adjustments to, and rotate the front control dial to make your selection. You can also press the multi-selector to view the options and make your selection. Your A77 Mark II is also capable of shooting high-quality HD video. When you record movies with your A77 Mark II, you can have the same control over depth of field and overall exposure as you would when you're shooting still images. Also note that you can record movies in any of the camera shooting modes. When you're using a scene mode or picture effect, the characteristics of those settings will be applied to your movie. You can make adjustments to many of the camera's settings prior to recording a movie. Here are the specific shooting settings that you can make adjustments to for both still picture taking and movie recording. ISO, white balance, creative style, exposure compensation, autofocus area, metering mode, face detection, object tracking, dynamic range optimizer, lens compensation settings, and picture effect. It's helpful to understand a little about movie resolution and movie file formats before you start shooting movies. There are two different movie recording formats to choose from, AVCHD and MP4. The AVCHD format records movies in full HD resolution, 1920 by 1080. You'll want to choose this format to record the highest resolution movies possible with your camera. AVCHD is an advanced video format ideal for archiving your video and burning to optical discs. You can burn AVCHD to a DVD in the AVCHD format or to a Blu-ray disc, both playable in full HD on a Blu-ray player. The other file format, MP4, is a good format to choose if you're going to be using the movie files for posting online or viewing on your computer. When shooting movies, use an SD Speed Class 10 memory card or higher. If a slower memory card is used, the movie may not be properly recorded. Recording a movie with this camera is easy. Simply press the shutter button halfway down to focus, then press the Movie Record button to begin recording. 
To refocus during movie recording, you can press the shutter button halfway down again. To stop movie recording, press the movie record button once again. To view a movie that you have just recorded, press the playback button. Scroll to the movie that you would like to play and then press the multi-selector to begin playback. There are a few additional things that you should know about movie recording with your A77 Mark II. If you'd like to have control over the aperture and shutter speed in your movies, you can use the movie mode. Rotate the mode dial to the movie mode icon. To choose the shooting mode, press the function button and scroll to the shooting mode icon. Here you can choose from program auto, aperture priority, shutter priority, and manual mode. Just as in still image shooting, you can use the control dials to make adjustments to the aperture and shutter speed. Adjust the focus with the focus ring on the lens. The autofocus area where the image is in focus will turn green. Now simply press the movie record button to begin recording and press it again to end recording. To record sound during movie recording, the A77 Mark II has a built-in microphone which will record sound automatically by default. Take care not to cover the microphone during movie recording. If you would like to turn off sound recording, you can do this through the camera's menu system. Navigate to the ninth camera settings menu and choose audio recording. Here you can select either on or off. After you have captured images and recorded movies with your Sony A77 Mark II, you will probably want to view them on the camera's large LCD. Let's take a look at the playback options for the A77 Mark II. To enter playback, simply press the playback button. The most recently recorded image or movie will be displayed on the LCD. You can use the multi-selector or control dials to scroll through the image and movie files. To help you more easily find specific images or movie files, you can press the Image Index button. Here, your images and movie files will be displayed by date. You can scroll to the left side of the screen and press the multi-selector to enter the calendar view. Here, you can choose the month, and here, you can choose the exact date. Below the calendar view, you can choose to sort your files by images only, MP4 movies only, or AVCHD movies only. You can also magnify images on the LCD monitor. This is especially useful when you want to check for good focus in detail areas of the photo. Press the zoom in button to see the desired level of detail in the photo. You can also rotate the rear control dial to view a larger area of the image. Then you can use the multi-selector to scroll to the desired area of the photo. You can use the front control dial to scroll through other images at the same level of magnification. As you're scrolling through photos in the camera's playback, you may find some images that you'd like to protect from being accidentally erased. To protect images, enter the camera's second playback menu and choose Protect. Here, choose Multiple Images. Now, all you need to do is scroll through the photos on the memory card. When you see an image that you'd like to protect, press the multi-selector to select the image. You can then continue scrolling through the images to select any others that you'd like to protect. Press the menu button and select OK to confirm protection for the selected images. You can then press the playback button to return to the regular image playback. Now, images that have been protected will have a small key icon displayed at the top of the screen. Note that if you format your memory card, all images will be permanently erased, even those that have been protected. If you find a photo that didn't turn out, you can delete it from your memory card by pressing the delete button. When the delete dialog appears, select delete and press the multi-selector to confirm. Note that once an image is erased, it cannot be recovered. The A77 Mark II has different playback screens that will each display different information about the image. Pressing the playback button will take you to the default playback where many important settings are displayed. At the top left corner, you'll see the memory card and the image view icon. Next, there is the date that the image was taken, the aspect ratio, 
the image size and quality, the battery level indicator, and the NFC icon. At the bottom of the screen, you'll see the shutter speed, aperture, ISO, the date the image was taken, the time the image was taken, and the image number out of the total number of images. Pressing the display button will bring up the histogram display. Here you'll see the same information at the top and bottom of the screen, but in addition you can see the shooting mode, shutter speed, aperture, ISO, exposure compensation, metering mode, focal length, creative style, white balance, and dynamic range optimizer setting. On the right side of the screen, you'll see the histograms for the whole image, the top histogram, as well as histograms for each color channel. The histogram gives a basic idea of the tone distribution of an image. If the histogram is shifted to the left side of the graph, the image will probably be too dark or underexposed. If the histogram is shifted to the right side of the graph, the image will be too bright or overexposed. In most cases, a properly exposed photo will have the data distributed over the whole graph. You may also see areas of your image that blink in black or white. Areas that blink in black are areas that have been underexposed and have lost all detail. Areas that blink in white have been overexposed and have lost all detail. The final playback screen can be shown by pressing the display button again. This is simply a full screen view of the image. One of the most important principles for taking a great picture is image sharpness. Image sharpness is affected by several things, including lens focus, camera shake, depth of field, and digital noise. Let's discuss the autofocus modes that are available on the A77 Mark II. Autofocus modes are available only when the AF switches on the camera body and lens are set to an AF position. To change the camera's focus mode, simply rotate the focus mode switch on the camera body. You can choose from MF or manual focus, C or continuous autofocus, A or automatic autofocus, and S or single shot autofocus. When you're choosing the focus mode, the main thing that you'll want to think about is whether or not the subject is in motion. With all of the focus modes, you can focus by pressing the shutter button halfway down, or by pressing the AF button. When focus is achieved, the AF point which achieved focus will flash in green, and the focus indicator will appear at the bottom left corner of the LCD. The first autofocus mode, AFC, or continuous autofocus, is best for shooting moving subjects and is for use when the focusing distance keeps changing. Use this mode when you're photographing sporting events, small children, or animals. While you hold the shutter button halfway, the subject will be focused continuously. In the AFA, or automatic AF mode, the focus mode automatically switches from single shot AF to continuous AF if the still subject starts moving. After the subject is focused in the single shot mode, if the subject starts moving, the camera will detect the movement and will change the AF mode automatically to continuous AF. The AFS or single shot AF is best suited for stationary subjects. Choose this mode when you're photographing objects or when you're doing portrait work with an older child or adult. In addition to the camera's autofocus modes, you'll also want to be familiar with the autofocus areas. The autofocus areas can be changed when the camera is set to the PASM, continuous priority, or movie shooting modes. To select an autofocus area, press the function button and navigate to the AF area setting. Rotate the front control dial to make your selection. The first option is wide. In this mode, the camera will select which of the 79 AF points to use for focus. Next, there is zone. With this option, you will simply select one of the three zones of focus areas and the camera will automatically select the focus area from that zone. To select the zone, simply toggle the multi-selector to the left or right. 
The next focus area option is center. When the option is selected, the camera will focus on subjects in the center of the frame. You can then press the AF lock button to lock, focus, and recompose the image. The next autofocus area is flexible spot. With flexible spot, you can choose exactly which part of the image you'd like the camera to focus on. This is useful when you want to direct the camera to focus on a very specific area of the frame. After you've chosen flexible spot, use the multi-selector to choose the exact focus point. You can quickly move the focus point back to the center by pressing the multi-selector. The final autofocus area is expand flexible spot. This is much like flexible spot, but if the camera is unable to focus on the single selected point, it will use one of eight focus points surrounding the selected point as the second priority in achieving focus. Your camera also has a manual focus option that can be used at times when it's difficult to get proper focus using autofocus methods. Let's take a minute to discuss the A77 Mark II's unique center lock-on AF feature. This will keep focusing on a moving object while tracking it. To use center lock on AF, press the menu button and navigate to the seventh camera settings menu. Here, select center lock on AF and on. Now align the target frame with the subject to be tracked and press the multi-selector. As the subject moves, the target frame will continue to track it and maintain focus. Now, simply press the shutter button to take the picture. To cancel or resume using the center lock on AF feature, press the multi-selector. Note that center lock on AF is especially useful for faces. If the face that is being tracked leaves the screen and then returns, the camera will resume focusing on that face. The Sony a77 Mark II has unique features called smile shutter and face detection, which will help you capture photos of people in sharp focus. These features can be accessed in the seventh camera settings menu. Here scroll to smile face detection. The first option is face detection off, which will disable this feature. Next there is face detection registered faces which will give priority for focusing to faces that you have registered. Next, there is face detection on. With this option, the camera will simply detect and focus on any faces that are in the scene without giving priority to registered faces. To register a face for the registered faces option, enter the menu system and scroll to the sixth custom settings menu. Here, select face registration. Select new registration now, fill the white frame with the face that you'd like to register and press the shutter button completely to take the picture. When prompted, select Enter. Now, that face will be given priority when you're using face detection with registered faces. Another useful feature when you're photographing people is Smile Shutter. With Smile Shutter, the camera will recognize a smiling face and take the picture all without you pressing the shutter button. To use Smile Shutter, enter the seventh camera setting menu and select Smile Face Detection. Scroll to the Smile Shutter setting, which has three different options. You can use the multi-selector to choose the level of smile that you'd like the camera to recognize. You can choose from Normal Smile, Big Smile, or Slight Smile. Let's talk about some other considerations when you're trying to take crisp and sharp images. Sometimes a photo may have poor focus and it's not related to the camera's focus mode or focus area mode. Camera shake happens when the camera moves while the shutter is open. This exposes the image sensor while the camera is moving and results in blurry images. Always try to steady the camera. Holding it with two hands and pressing the viewfinder gently against your face will help. You can also lean against something or use a tripod, a monopod, or even a bean bag to steady the camera. You can also reduce the effect of camera shake by selecting a fast shutter speed. This reduces the amount of time the image sensor is exposed to shaky conditions. A helpful rule of thumb is to set your shutter speed to one over the focal length.
confusing? Let me explain. If the focal length of your lens is 300 millimeters, for example, you should set your shutter speed to 1 300th of a second. If the focal length is 30 millimeters, you might get by using a shutter speed as low as 1 30th of a second. Let's take a look at the A77 Mark II's sophisticated menu system. Depending on what shooting mode you're using, different menu items will be accessible or grayed out. For our purposes in this guide, we'll be showing the menu options that are available in the camera's manual mode. Many of these settings are discussed in greater detail in other chapters of this guide. We'll just look at an overview of the menu items in this chapter. The first menus are the camera's settings menus, indicated by the camera icon. In the first camera settings menu, the first item is image size, followed by image aspect ratio. You can change the aspect ratio either to 3.2 or 16.9. If you're planning on making standard 4x6 prints of your images, you'll want to keep the aspect ratio at 3.2. Next, there is image quality setting, followed by the panorama size and direction options for the sweep panorama mode. The second camera settings menu begins with file format. The file format option will allow you to choose whether you'd like to record movies in AVCHD or MP4. Next, there is record setting, where you can choose the movie recording size, frame rate, and scanning method. The next two options are drive mode and flash mode, which will simply allow you to choose those settings. Next, there is flash compensation, where you can adjust the overall brightness of the flash. The next menu item is flash control. Here you can choose the method for determining the intensity of the flash output. The ADI flash option provides accurate flash compensation with virtually no effect from the reflection off the subject. The pre-flash TTL method uses data only from pre-flash metering to determine the amount of light to output, and the manual flash option will allow you to choose the power ratio of the flash. The third camera settings menu begins with power ratio. Power ratio is a way to describe the mix between ambient light and light from your flash. If flash control was set to manual flash, this is where you would adjust the power ratio. The default value is 1 to 1, but you can see there are many other options here. Next, there is red eye reduction. When enabled, red eye reduction will fire a pre-flash to lessen the appearance of red eyes in images where the flash is used. The AFA setup option sets whether to fine tune focus manually when the focus mode is set to AFA. You can choose from AFA, which will automatically switch from single shot AF and continuous AF, depending on the movement of the subject. Or you can choose DMF, which will allow you to manually fine tune the focus after focus has been achieved with autofocus. Next, there is focus area, where you can choose from the camera's five focus area options. Next, there is AF Illuminator, which can be set to Auto or Off. When it's set to Auto, the AF Illuminator will provide light for a dimly lit subject to aid focusing. Note, the flash must be up to provide the source of light. The fourth camera settings menu begins with Image AF Drive Speed, where you can choose from Fast or Slow. If you're recording action scenes, you'll want to select Fast. Next, there is Image AF Track Duration, with options ranging from 5 being the highest and 1 being the slowest. Select the higher settings if you're recording fast action and want the camera to keep focusing on a moving subject for a longer than normal period of time. Select Mid Settings if you want to keep the focus on a specific subject when there are obstacles in the foreground. Next, there is Movie AF Track Duration. This is pretty much the same as Image AF Track Duration, only here you have three options, High, Mid, and Low. 
Next, there is exposure compensation, which will allow you to adjust the overall brightness of the image. The next menu item is exposure step, where you can choose whether you'd like the exposure settings to be displayed in one half or one third step increments. The fifth camera settings menu begins with ISO, followed by metering mode, white balance, DRO auto HDR, creative style, and picture effect. Each menu item simply allows you to choose the setting for that option. We go over each of these options elsewhere in this guide. The sixth camera settings menu begins with zoom, which allows you to set the zoom scale for clear image zoom and digital zoom. Next, there is focus magnifier, which will enlarge the image before the picture is taken so you can check for good focus in detail areas. Next, there is long exposure noise reduction, which allows you to select the noise reduction for shots with very slow shutter speeds. Next, there is high ISO noise reduction, which will allow you to select the level of noise reduction for images shot with high ISO settings. The seventh camera settings menu begins with center lock on AF, which allows you to enable or disable the center lock on AF feature. Next, there is smile shutter and face detection, where you can enable or disable these camera features, as well as select the mode you'd like to use for smile shutter and face detection. Next is soft skin effect, which will smooth the skin in photos of people. You can choose from low, mid, or high, or you can choose to leave it off. Next, there is auto object framing, which will analyze the scene and record a second image that has been cropped for a more impressive composition. The eighth camera settings menu begins with auto mode. Here you can choose either intelligent auto or superior auto. Intelligent auto analyzes the scene and chooses what it considers the best camera settings for the situation. Superior auto does the same thing, but with the addition of layered image technology. This means that in superior auto mode, the camera may choose to layer multiple images together to create a better overall image. This seems like a great option, but it doesn't work so well with fast moving subjects. Next, there is scene selection, which will simply allow you to choose the scene mode when the mode dial is set to scene selection. Next, there is movie, which will allow you to choose the exposure mode for movie recording when the mode dial is set to movie. Next, there is image steady shot. When enabled, Sony steady shot can reduce the effect of camera shake in images with slow shutter speeds. Next, there is movie steady shot. This is the same as image steady shot, but this option is for shooting movies. Next, there is the color space setting with two options, sRGB and Adobe RGB. Some photographers prefer the sRGB mode as it requires less processing later. Other photographers prefer the Adobe RGB mode as this mode has a wider range of colors, making it a preferred option for images that will be extensively processed on the computer. The final camera settings menu begins with Movie Auto Slow Shutter, which will automatically adjust the shutter speed to compensate for the brightness of the environment when you're recording movies. The next menu item is Audio Recording, which will allow you to enable or disable sound recording in movie mode. The audio recording level will allow you to adjust the input level of the microphone. Next, there is Audio Out Timing, when you're using an external HDMI monitor to monitor your video, there is a slight delay in the video signal from what is actually going on live. This delay is only a fraction of a second, but it is noticeable. You can choose live to output a live audio signal, so what you are seeing in real life is in sync with what you are hearing. Or you can choose lip sync to match the audio with the actual video output. This is more desirable if you're watching the action on the monitor itself. The wind noise reduction option will reduce the wind noise during movie recording. The final item in the camera settings is memory, which will allow you to register a bank of settings to one of the memory recall modes. We discussed this in detail earlier in this guide. 
The next menu is the Custom Settings menu, which includes seven sub-menus. The first item in the first Custom Settings menu is Zebra, where you can choose how you'd like the camera to show stripes to help you adjust brightness. You can choose a value from 70 IRE to 100 IRE. Anything above the level that you set will show up as zebra stripes on the screen. Next, there is Focus Magnify Time. This will set the amount of time the image will be magnified when using the Focus Magnification function. You can choose 2 seconds, 5 seconds, or no limit, which will magnify the image until you actually press the shutter button. Next, there is Grid Line, which allows you to select the type of composition grid that can be displayed over the image while shooting. You can choose from Rule of Thirds, Square, or Diagonal plus Square. You can also choose to have the grid disabled. Audio Level Display allows you to show or hide the audio levels when recording video. The Auto Review setting allows you to choose how long you'd like the images to be automatically displayed on the LCD after being taken. The second custom settings menu begins with Display Button Settings. This will allow you to choose which display screens will be available when you press the display button. You can choose different options for the monitor and the viewfinder. Choose the one that you'd like to update then select the displays that you'd like to have available and select Enter. The Peaking Level setting will enhance the outline of in-focus ranges with a specific color when shooting in manual focus. You can choose from High, Mid, Low, or Off. The Peaking Color sets the color that will be used for the peaking function. Next, there is Exposure Set Guide, which will allow you to enable or disable the Aperture and Shutter Speed Guide on the LCD. The Live View Display option sets whether or not to display the effects of creative styles, picture effects, white balance, and exposure compensation on the screen. Next, there is Picture Autofocus Range Control Assist, with options for on and off. Autofocus Range Control Assist will allow you to set a range for the autofocus. This helps prevent objects further or nearer than your subject from interfering with the autofocus. The third custom settings menu begins with AF Auto Clear, which determines whether the focus area should disappear after the focus is achieved or if it should remain displayed. Next, there is AF Area Points, which will allow you to limit the focus area points used. If you choose Auto, the camera will set the focus area points automatically. If you choose 61 points, the focus area points are set manually to 61 points. Flexible Spot will allow you to choose from all 61 focus points or only 15 focus points. Wide AF Area Display will allow you to choose whether or not to actually display the focus points when the focus area is set to wide. On will display the 71 focus points and off will hide them. Next, there is Zoom Setting, where you can choose whether you'd like the camera to use optical zoom only, clear image zoom, or digital zoom. The fourth custom settings menu begins with iStart AF, which will allow you to choose whether or not you'd like the camera to autofocus when you look through the viewfinder when an optional lens adapter is attached to the camera. Next, there is Finder Monitor, which determines the method for switching the view between the viewfinder and LCD. Next, there is Release Without Lens, where you can choose whether or not you'd like to allow the shutter to be released if there is not a lens attached. Next, there is Priority Setup. If you choose AF, the camera will not take a picture until it's able to focus on the subject. If you choose Release, the camera will take the picture immediately even if your subject is not in focus. If you choose Balanced Emphasis, the camera will try to balance priority between focus and photo opportunity. Next, there is AF with Shutter. When enabled, AF with shutter will activate the autofocus when the shutter button is pressed halfway. Next is AEL with shutter. When enabled, AEL with shutter will activate the auto exposure lock when the shutter button is pressed halfway. 
The fifth custom settings menu begins with steady shot with shutter. If set to on, image blur will be reduced not only at the moment of shutter release, but also when the shutter button is pressed halfway down. The next menu item is E Front Curtain Sync, which allows you to set whether or not to use the electronic front curtain shutter function. Next, there is Superior Auto Image Extract, which will automatically extract single images from multi-shot modes when the Superior Auto mode is used. Next, there is Exposure Compensation Set, which allows you to choose whether the exposure compensation controls the ambient light exposure plus flash or the ambient light exposure only. Bracket Order will allow you to choose the order that bracketed images are recorded. The sixth custom settings menu begins with Face Registration, which allows you to register faces for the camera's face detection feature. The next setting is AF Micro Adjust. This will allow you to adjust the autofocus settings for different lenses. You may have a lens that seems to be just a tiny bit out of focus in one direction every time you take a shot. You can use this setting to remedy the problem. First, set AF Adjustment Set to On. Then you can choose the amount. Values with a plus will shift the autofocus position away from the camera and values with a minus will shift the autofocus position toward the camera. Once you've registered values for a particular lens, those values will be saved and recalled each time the lens is attached. Here you can choose to clear the settings for the attached lens. Next is Lens Compensation with Lens Compensation options for shading, chromatic aberration, and distortion. These menu items will allow you to choose to have the correction for these items set to either Auto or Off. Next is Function Menu Settings, where you can choose which 12 settings you'd like to be accessible when the Function button is pressed. Next, there is Custom Key Settings, where you can customize the role of almost every button on the camera. The seventh and final Custom Settings menu begins with Dial Setup where you can reverse the roles of the front and rear control dials. The next setting is Dial Exposure Value Compensation, where you can choose to have either the front dial or rear dial automatically adjust exposure compensation when it's rotated. You can also choose Off. Movie button is next. If Always is selected, the Movie button will always begin movie recording, regardless of the shooting mode that is selected. If Movie Mode only is selected, the Movie button will only begin movie recording when the Mode dial is set to Movie. The final item in the Custom Settings menu is Dial Lock. If Lock is selected, you can temporarily disable the function of both the control dials when the function button is pressed. The next menu is the Wireless menu which begins with Send to Smartphone and Send to Computer, which will allow you to send images to your smartphone or computer respectively. Next, there is a View on TV, which will allow you to connect the camera to a network-enabled TV to view images. Next, there is Control with Smartphone, which will allow you to connect to a smartphone. We'll discuss this process in Chapter 10 using the built-in Wi-Fi. Airplane mode will disable the wireless communications for the camera. WPS push will allow you to register an access point to the camera. The second wireless menu begins with access point settings, which will allow you to manually register your access point. Next, there is edit device name, where you can change the name you'd like the camera to be shown as on other devices. Next, there is Display MAC Address, which simply displays the MAC address of the camera. Next, there is SSID Password Reset, which will allow you to reset the SSID and password for the smartphone connection. The final item in the wireless menu is Reset Network Settings, which will allow you to reset all network settings for the camera. The next menu is the Playback menu, which begins with Delete. With this option, you can delete multiple images 
or you can delete all of the images with the selected criteria. Next, there is View Mode, which will allow you to choose the default view mode for image playback. Next, there is Image Index, which will allow you to choose whether you'd like 9 images or 25 images in the image index. With Display Rotation, you can choose whether vertical images will be rotated on the LCD during playback. Slideshow will allow you to set up the camera to play a slideshow of images. This is especially useful when the camera is connected to a TV. Next, there is Rotate, which will allow you to rotate images in playback. The second playback menu begins with Enlarge Image, which will simply allow you to zoom in on an image in playback. Next, there is 4K Still Image Playback, which will allow you to output 4K still images to a compatible TV when the camera is connected via an HDMI cable. Protect will allow you to protect images from accidental deletion. The final item in the playback menu is Specify Printing, which will allow you to adjust settings for printing images when the camera is connected to a compatible printer. The final menus are the setup menus. The first setup menu begins with monitor brightness and viewfinder brightness, where you can adjust the overall brightness of the LCD and electronic viewfinder. Note that the brightness of the monitor and the viewfinder do not affect the exposure of the final image. Next, there is finder color temperature, which will allow you to adjust the color temperature for the electronic viewfinder. Volume settings will allow you to adjust the volume for movie sound in playback. Next, there is audio signals, which will allow you to enable or disable the beep sounds that are heard when the camera auto-focuses or performs other operations. The second setup menu begins with Tile Menu, which allows you to choose between the currently displayed List Style Menu or a Graphic Menu Display. Next, there is Mode Dial Guide which allows you to enable or disable the guide that is displayed on the LCD when the mode dial is rotated. Next, there is Delete Confirmation, which allows you to choose whether you'd like Delete to be displayed first or Cancel to be displayed first when the Delete button is pressed. Power Save Start Time will allow you to choose how long you'd like the camera to wait before going into Power Save mode. You can choose from 10 seconds, 1 minute, 2 minutes, 5 minutes, or 30 minutes. The third setup menu begins with Cleaning Mode, which will allow you to automatically clean the image sensor. Demo Mode is next, which will allow you to choose whether or not to display a demonstration of movie playback. Demo Mode is only available when the camera is connected to an AC adapter. The next menu item is Remote Control which will allow you to set up the camera to use an optional remote. Next, there is HDMI settings, where you can choose the resolution for output to an HDTV, choose to display shooting information on external HD monitors, and when connected to a Bravia Sync compatible TV, allow you to control the camera with the TV remote. The fourth setup menu begins with USB connection and USB LUN setting, where you can choose how a computer will recognize the camera when it's connected with a USB cable. Language will allow you to choose the language that is used for the menus and displays. Date time setup will allow you to set the date and time for the camera's internal clock. Area setting will allow you to choose the time zone for the camera's internal clock. The fifth setup menu begins with Format, which will allow you to format the memory card. File number will allow you to choose the way that the camera assigns file numbers to the image and movie files. Select Recording Folder will allow you to choose the folder on the memory card where you'd like images to be saved. New Folder will allow you to create a new folder on the memory card. The folder name will allow you to choose either the standard form or date form for the folder format. Recover Image DB will recover the image database file for movies and still images to enable recording and playback. 
The sixth setup menu begins with display media information, which will allow you to see the number of still images that are recorded on the memory card, as well as the number of minutes of recorded video. Version will simply display the firmware version that is currently installed on the camera. The final item in the setup menu is setting reset, with options for camera settings reset and initialize. Camera settings reset will simply reset the camera settings to default. Initialize will completely restore all camera settings to factory default. Let's discuss white balance. It's important to understand that the quality of your pictures is affected by the color of the surrounding light and how the camera's electronics process that light. White balance is determined by the color temperature of light sources, which is measured in degrees Kelvin. The higher color temperatures in the area of about 7500 Kelvin to 5600 Kelvin are usually found in situations like a sunlit or cloudy day. These shooting situations have a greater amount of cool blue tones and a lesser amount of warm red tones. To compensate for the coolness of the color, the camera will add warm tones to help balance the color temperature. Lower color temperature situations are measured in the area of 3500 Kelvin down to 1900 Kelvin and are found in lighting situations like standard lighting from a tungsten light bulb or candlelight. These types of shooting situations are found on the lower end of the spectrum and produce greater amounts of warm red tones and lesser amounts of cool blue tones. To access the white balance settings, press the white balance button. Here you can choose which white balance setting will be best for your shooting scenario. A benefit of the A77 Mark II is that it allows for fine tuning of white balance within each white balance setting by simply toggling the multi selector. Your camera will attempt to automatically determine the white balance setting when it's set to the auto white balance mode. This is the default setting, but you can get better results by setting a preset white balance or by manually customizing the white balance. The next white balance setting is daylight. Daylight is great for taking pictures in the sunlight. This setting is marked with a sun icon. Use the shade setting when you're taking pictures in the shade. It reduces the bluish tones in a picture. This setting is marked by an icon of a house with a shade. Use the cloudy setting when taking pictures on days that are overcast. This is marked with a cloud icon. The incandescent setting is used when taking pictures under common light bulbs. It reduces the reddish tones in a picture. This setting is marked with a light bulb icon. The A77 Mark II has four different fluorescent light settings that can be used when shooting under different colors of fluorescent lighting that are common today. The next setting is the flash setting. Use this setting when using the built-in or an external flash unit. The color temperature setting will allow you to select the specific color temperature of light that you're shooting under. The next three icons are the custom white balance options. Select one of these options when you want to use your own custom white balance settings. The last icon is the custom white balance setup option, which is used to create the custom white balance setting specific to the lighting conditions that you're shooting in. This is done by taking a picture of a white card or object and then selecting the image for the camera's electronics to reference. An 18% gray card, which can be purchased at your local camera store, will give you the most accurate results. You can also use a white card, an object like a shirt, or a piece of paper to achieve similar results. Press the white balance button, navigate to the custom white balance setup option, and press the multi-selector. Make sure that the white or gray object fills the small circle at the center of the frame and press the center of the multi-selector to take the white balance reading. The camera will display the color temperature reading. On this screen, you'll be able to press the multi-selector to the right or left to choose which of the three custom white balance settings you'd like this white balance to be registered to. Press the multi-selector to resume picture taking. Creative styles are another useful feature of the A77 Mark II.
Creative styles are an intuitive way for you to tell the camera what levels of sharpness, contrast, saturation, and color tone that you'd like for your specific shooting scenario. The camera has 13 different preset creative styles and you can make adjustments to settings in each of them. To access the creative styles, press the function button and select the creative style setting. First, there is the standard creative style. This is a good general use creative style. The camera will automatically adjust color tone to fit the scene you're photographing. Images taken with this creative style will appear sharp, vivid, and crisp. The vivid creative style will record images with greater saturation and sharpening. Use this creative style for striking images of flowers, greenery, and ocean views. The neutral creative style will capture images with reduced saturation and sharpness. This is a good mode to use if you plan on extensively editing your images later. The clear creative style will capture images with clear tone and is good for use in radiant light. The deep creative style will capture images with deep and dense color. The light creative style will record images with bright color. Use this style for images with simple tones to create images with a light, refreshing feel. The portrait creative style is great for portraits, particularly close-ups. It offers pleasant skin tones and makes the image appear a little softer. The landscape creative style is good for taking pictures of scenery outdoors. This picture style makes the greens and blues in the image more vivid. The sunset creative style is great for capturing the vivid colors of sunset scenes. The night scene creative style will capture images with realistic contrast of nighttime scenes. The autumn leaves creative style will capture the beautiful red and orange colors of autumn leaves. The black and white creative style will capture images with smooth black and white gradation. Images taken in this setting cannot be converted to color later. The sepia creative style will capture brown and white images with a classic antique look. Images taken in this setting cannot be converted to color later. There are also six style box creative styles, including standard, vivid, neutral, portrait, landscape, and black and white. The style boxes will allow you to register and save adjustments. All of these creative styles are fully customizable. You can make adjustments to the contrast, saturation, and sharpness. We'll select one that we'd like to edit and press the right side of the multi-selector to view the options. Here, we can use the multi-selector to select and make adjustments to each parameter. Your Sony a77 Mark II has picture effects, which are a great way to add creativity to your images. Picture effects are only available in the camera's PASM movie recording and movie recall modes. To access the picture effects, press the function button and navigate to picture effects indicated with the brush icon. First, there is toy camera. This picture effect will mimic the look of a toy camera photo with shaded corners and pronounced colors. Within the toy camera effect, you can move the multi-selector to the left or right to choose from normal, cool, warm, green, and magenta effects. The pop color picture effect will create a vivid look that emphasizes the colors in the image. The posterization effects will give your images a higher contrast, abstract look by emphasizing either the primary colors or black and white tones, depending on the setting that you select when you move the multi-selector to the left or right. Retro Photo will make your image look aged with sepia color tones and faded contrast. The soft high key picture effect will create the look of an old photo with soft colors and reduced contrast. There are also partial color picture effects for red, green, blue, and yellow. Use the multi-selector to choose the color that you'd like. These picture effects create images that retain the respective color of the effect but the other colors in the image are converted to black and white. High contrast monochrome will create high contrast black and white images. 
The soft focus picture effect will create images with a soft lighting effect. When you move the multi-selector to the left or right, you can set the intensity of the effect to mid, high, or low. The HDR painting will take three high-speed shots and combine them to create the look of a painting with enhanced colors and details. Again, you can choose from three levels of intensity using the multi-selector. The rich tone monochrome effect will take three high-speed shots and combine them to create black and white images with rich gradation and details. The miniature effect will enhance the subject and considerably blur the background. You can move the multi-selector to the left or right to choose the area of the frame that you'd like to be in focus. You can choose from auto, top, middle horizontal, bottom, right, middle vertical, or left. This effect is best used from above. The watercolor picture effect will capture images that appear to have been painted with watercolors. The illustration picture effect will create images that look like illustrations with pronounced outlines. You can choose the intensity of the effect by moving the multi-selector to the left or to the right. Keep in mind that many of the picture effects will work for both still image capture and movie recording. Your A77 Mark II has two great features that will help you retain amazing shadow and highlight details, even in backlight and high contrast lighting, Auto HDR and DRO or High Dynamic Range Optimizer. Let's take a minute to learn about both of these camera features, starting with HDR. HDR stands for High Dynamic Range. It's a technique that is used in photography for creating captivating photos of dramatically lit subjects. The HDR effect is created when three differently exposed images are combined to create a single photo that shows a super realistic range of shadows and highlights. Here's how to configure the camera to use the auto HDR setting. First, make sure that the shooting mode is set to P, A, S, or M. Now press the function button and navigate to the DRO auto HDR setting. Use the multi-selector to select HDR. Now use the multi-selector or rear control dial to adjust the level of variation you'd like in exposure between the shots that will be used to create the HDR image. If you choose auto, the camera will automatically determine the level of variation between the shots. If you choose one EV, the variation between each shot will be one exposure step, which will make the images have slight variation. If you choose six EV, the images used to create the final HDR, will have more variation in exposure. Press the multi-selector to make your selection, then press the shutter button halfway to focus and the rest of the way to take the picture. Since the camera will be taking three shots at very high speed, it's important to make sure to keep the camera as steady as possible while the pictures are being taken. After the images are combined, two images will be recorded on the camera's memory card. The first image will have the proper exposure, and the second will be the final HDR image. Now let's talk about the Dynamic Range Optimizer, or DRO. This setting is similar to the Auto HDR as it helps you to capture rich natural shadow and highlight details in high contrast lighting, but it differs from Auto HDR in that it captures just one image. So it can be used with moving subjects, and it can even be used with continuous shooting. The DRO setting is available when the camera's shoot mode is set to P, A, S, or M modes, and it's accessed under the same menu option as Auto HDR. Again, press the function button, then scroll to the DRO Auto HDR option. Select the DRO Auto option. Here, you can use the multi-selector or rear control dial to adjust the level of optimization that you'd like. The higher the number, the more shadows and highlights will be recovered in an image. Now simply take the picture. The Sony a77 Mark II has a unique feature that will automatically crop an image after it's been taken. This feature is called Auto Object Framing, and it's for use with portraits and some macro photography. 
With auto object framing, the camera will record the original image as well as a version that has been cropped to bring the emphasis to the primary subject in the frame. To use auto object framing, press the menu button and navigate to the seventh camera settings menu. Here, select auto object framing and auto. Now, frame the image as you normally would and take the picture. If the camera applies an auto framing crop to the image, you will see a brief crop overlay shown on the LCD during image review. To view the cropped and original versions of the image, press the playback button. Your A77 Mark II has a powerful built-in flash that can provide you with extra light in certain shooting scenarios. The effective range of the built-in flash is between 3 and 30 feet, depending on the aperture, shutter speed, and ISO. To use the built-in flash in the P, A, S, and M mode, simply press the flash button and the flash will pop up. In the automatic and scene modes, the built-in flash will pop up and fire automatically in low light or backlight conditions. Note that the flash will not fire in some shooting modes and that some flash modes are available only in certain shooting modes. To access the flash modes, press the function button and use the multi-selector to navigate to the flash options. Here you can use the front control dial to scroll through the flash mode options and select the one that you'd like. There are five different flash modes. Let's talk about each of them now. First, there is the flash off mode. When this mode is selected, the flash will not fire even if the flash is raised. Use the flash off mode when you do not want the flash to fire regardless of lighting. The next flash mode is the auto flash mode. With this flash mode, the camera will automatically evaluate the lighting conditions and fire to provide the correct amount of light. Next, there is the fill flash mode, which will fire the flash each time a picture is taken, regardless of lighting. Use this for situations when there is plenty of light, but you'd like the subject to be lit with the flash. Next is the slow sync flash mode. This is a good mode to use when you're photographing a subject at night and you would like the background and the subject to be properly exposed. The next flash mode is rear sync. In this mode, the flash will fire just before the shutter closes, creating a trailing image of the movement of the subject. The last flash mode is wireless, which is used to fire an optional external flash unit. If the image is too bright or too dark, you can use flash exposure compensation to make adjustments. To adjust the flash exposure compensation, press the function button and navigate to flash compensation. Use the front control dial to adjust the level of flash compensation you'd like. Numbers with plus signs will increase the brightness of the flash, and numbers with minus signs will decrease the brightness of the flash. Your Sony A77 Mark II has a built-in Wi-Fi feature that makes it even more versatile in the way that it can capture and share images. The built-in Wi-Fi will allow you to connect the camera to a computer, smartphone, or tablet and use the Sony Play Memories app to share images or operate the camera remotely. Let's discuss how to configure the camera for wireless operation with a smartphone you'll first need to make sure that the Sony Play Memories app has been installed on your smartphone. Now, press the menu button and scroll to the wireless menu. Select Control with Smartphone. The camera will prompt you with an SSID and password. For iPhones, go to Settings, Wi-Fi, and select the network for the A77 Mark II. When prompted, Use the password displayed on the LCD monitor as the password to connect. Once connected, launch the Play Memories app on the smartphone. Now you can tap the camera button on the smartphone to take the picture. If you tap the mode icon, you can choose between still image capture and movie shooting. If you tap the settings icon, you can access the self-timer and other settings for the app. 
If you tap the image thumbnail at the bottom of the screen, you can access options for that image. If you tap here, you can access options for sharing the image. If you tap the thumbnail icon at the top of the screen, you can view all the images. And if you tap the camera icon, you can resume picture taking. We hope you've enjoyed learning more about your Sony A77 Mark II. We know this new information will give you enough confidence and know-how to take your photography skills to new levels. Remember, you can refer back to any section of this guide at any time. Just select the topics that you want to review from the main menu. Watch for more Quick Pro guides on using newly released cameras. Thanks for watching.